but is not necessarily caused by the vaccine. 27 of these reports, that is one in 22,000 doses distributed, were considered serious, such as a severe allergic reaction. In terms of adverse effects by the vaccine, earlier this week, Ontario's chief coroner, Dirk Heyer, who's also part of the province's health command team, acknowledged that he is investigating a case out of a Windsor, Ontario retirement home where a woman was inoculated with the Moderna vaccine and died shortly after. Uh, so I imagine we won't have an update on that for some time. In the meantime, the prime minister stated once again confidently that despite this temporary delay in Pfizer shipments, that any Canadian that wishes to be inoculated with the COVID-19 vaccine will have an opportunity to do so by September. Back to you. Okay, thanks so much, Christina. Well, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced new findings about the COVID-19 variant first discovered in the UK. We've been informed today that in addition to spreading more quickly, it also now appears that there is some evidence that the new variant, the variant that was first identified in London and the South East, may be associated with a higher degree of mortality. So far, Canada has identified 31 cases of the B117 variant now circling widely in England. Federal and provincial health officials have admitted it is likely in the community based on a small amount of cases with no association with travel. Public Safety Minister Bill Blair says nothing is off the table and Canada could impose further travel restrictions at any time. Quarantine has been and continues to be our most effective measure and it remains mandatory. We have scaled up the presence of border services and public health officers at our border to ensure that people understand their quarantine obligations to verify their quarantine plans. And we are working with the provinces and territories to ensure that there is follow up and enforcement of those quarantine requirements. The Ontario Health Coalition held a news conference today to highlight the crisis in the province's long term care homes. At this point, there are 99 large outbreaks of the 250 long-term care outbreaks in Ontario. That means more than 10 residents and staff have been infected. Of those, uh, uh, 53 include more than 50 residents and staff. 100 of the outbreaks include more, uh, sorry, 29 of the outbreaks include more than 100 residents and staff. 15 include more than 150 residents and staff. Seven include more than 200 residents and staff. I am not coming against the hardworking PSWs, nurses and doctors in my mom's home. In my experience, these are very hardworking people doing an incredibly difficult job in an incredibly difficult situation. But there's just never enough of them, even in one of the better homes. The Ontario Health Coalition is calling on the province to immediately recruit and train staff and improve wages and working conditions. It's also demanding improved infection control practices for long-term care and enforcement of the protocol so operators are held accountable if they don't follow the rules. The NDP is calling on the province to provide more financial support for college and university students as the pandemic drags on. The New Democrats want the government to put student debt payments on pause until the COVID-19 crisis is over. The party says the pandemic is making PC cuts to OSAP supports worse and forcing many students to choose between paying off their debt and buying essentials like groceries. It's absolutely coming upon this government to make, you know, to put this pause on student, on OSAP payments, to cancel the interest for the duration of the pandemic. And then when we're through this pandemic, let's make Ontario's post-secondary education system affordable. So students don't end up with a huge debt burden at the end of their graduation. And the NDP says the Ford government has cut OSAP support by $2.1 billion since 2018. Thousands of small business owners have taken up the government's offer of help as the province deals with the ongoing lockdown. The government provided an update on the Ontario Small Business Support Grant this morning at Queen's Park. They say 42,000 business owners have applied for the program that gives eligible businesses up to $20,000. The program is for small businesses that have had to restrict or close operations during the shut down. Finance Minister Peter Bethlen Falvey wouldn't say whether the program could be extended if lockdowns remain in effect. 
this is uh, very encouraging. We've heard from a lot of small businesses. Uh, this is the difference between sinking and swimming, so so that's good. I, I did speak in, uh, with Dan Kelly um, before we launched the program to get input. Uh, they've helped uh, put this out to their members. Uh, we'll continue to have dialogue because uh, our job is not done. To your point, uh, you know, 42,000 is great so that Pick just mentioned, but we encourage people to continue to apply. City of Toronto traffic data shows more people are staying home just like they are being asked to do. The data collected in part by using watch your speed signs in school zones show that during the morning peak between 8 and 9, traffic volumes have dropped to 52% of normal levels. That compares to 80% in the early fall, but is not at low as low as 44% from last spring. I suggest we're not doing quite as well as we did in the spring, but that there's certainly been a big change uh, since the fall. And we're going to be monitoring this every week. Same with the phone data. Uh, you know, the phones, it measures how many uh, phones move around or how many just stay at home. And uh, it was 82% uh, are staying home now, but that's compared to 87% in the spring. So that suggests that, again, in the spring, there were more people staying home. The city says pedestrian traffic downtown has also dropped from 30% of normal volume in the fall to 21% since the new lockdown orders were put in place. Homicide detectives are investigating the death of a woman near York University. Emergency crews were called to this building at 500 Murray Ross Parkway just after 9.30 last night for a medical call. They arrived to find a woman injured inside an apartment. She was pronounced dead on the scene. I come outside, I just see like six, six, seven cop cars. I see two firefighters and it's just quiet. I don't know what's going on and that's it. You know, I stayed there maybe two hours. They did their business. I saw, I saw the detective come up. That's when I knew something happened. Cause usually I always see police around this area. But the moment I saw that detective, I'm like, something happened. Cause they don't call detectives for, for ongoing cases. It has to be something important, right? Police say the victim was not the one who called 911, but it's not clear who did. Anyone with information is asked to contact the police. An elite Taekwondo coach has pleaded guilty to two additional charges of sexual assault involving a second student. Shin Wook Lim was convicted last week of 10 charges related to incidents that took place between 2015 and 2017 involving an athlete he trained at a Toronto martial arts studio. Lim had faced a total of five new charges, but three were withdrawn after his guilty plea. Both complainants described the lingering harm caused by Lim's actions in victim impact statements delivered in court today. It is 2.12 and minus 2. You're watching Toronto's breaking news, CP24. When we come back, Prime Minister Trudeau speaks for the first time about the resignation of former Governor General Julie Payette. We'll hear from him when we return. He spoke with the Queen today to let her know who will be filling in as Governor General following the resignation of Julie Payette. The 57-year-old former astronaut stepped down ahead of the release of a report into allegations she oversaw a toxic work environment. Justin Trudeau says Chief Justice Richard Wagner will step in until he names a new Governor General. Trudeau says everyone deserves a safe and healthy workplace, including employees at Rideau Hall. So now, obviously, the uh, work that has been done uh, by people working at Rideau Hall uh, over the past years has always been exceptional. They were, were fulfill important duties for Canadians uh, and as we saw uh, were uh, sometimes in very difficult situations. Uh, we want to thank them uh, for their work and uh, reassure them that we will continue to stand up uh, for uh, workplaces uh, that are safe and secure uh, everywhere in the government, but indeed uh, across the country. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh says the federal government needs to set a better example for worker treatment. Clearly in the vetting process, the prime minister failed to do what was necessary. There was concerns raised from the past that have come forward in, in, in some of the reports and some of the information that we've received publicly, now it's available, that, uh, that this has been an ongoing problem. And uh, and so clearly Justin Trudeau was more interested in seeking a, a flashy headline about his appointment rather than doing the hard work of making sure this was the right person for the job and doing the appropriate vetting. So that, that does raise a concern about vetting. Political strategist Peter Donalo, who was also the communications director for former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien, says it would have been obvious to the Trudeau government that there was a problem long before they saw that report. 
your smoke detector goes off at home. You don't wait till your house is engulfed in flames before you actually do something about it. You do something based on the early warnings, and they should have done that here. Uh, and then, you know, this has just been a, a growing melodrama over the three years, and it's shocking that they let it kind of drag on like this. And Intergovernmental Affairs Minister Dominic LeBlanc says the debacle shows there's a need to strengthen the process for vetting visceral, visceral appointments. Rather, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will be speaking with newly sworn in U.S. President Joe Biden today. The call will be Biden's first with a foreign leader since he took office on Wednesday. The White House says the two men will discuss the importance of the U.S.-Canada relationship. They're also expected to talk about the president's decision to cancel the Keystone XL pipeline. Biden signed an executive order revoking a presidential permit for the project, which would have carried oil from Alberta to the U.S. Gulf Coast. During our conversation, the premiers and I talked about the United States' decision on the Keystone XL pipeline. I am, of course, disappointed with this choice. To workers, especially in Alberta and Saskatchewan, who've been hit hard, we will continue to have your backs. We will always stand up for good Canadian jobs. And that call is expected to happen at around 5 o'clock this afternoon. 217 and minus 2, this is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. We'll have your weather forecast when we come back.